This is Zach and CT. A little bit of bonus content, a bit of a, a question and answer session as we're driving on the happy Easter Monday to everyone towards Rotherham. Yeah, I know. What a what a fun, fun yeah, stadium what, to visit. What a lovely place to go on a bank holiday weekend. But more importantly, let's hope we can get the three points today. Um, I'm never optimistic when we play teams down the bottom um, as a Mill fan, but especially since Mill Harris is back, we never used to beat the beat the bottom teams with him. No, so um, it's going to be a, a tough one. Hopefully, we can do the business. Rather than have been on a terrible run of form, conceding goals for fun, so you know it's going to be a one-nil rather than win. But <laughs> hopefully, we'll, you'll see us on the drive home, and we'll be um, we'll be chirpy and happy. I'm semi-confident semi-confident for today but yeah we put we asked you for your uh, questions to give us something to do basically on the way up here and um, Zach's going to read them out thank you very much for everyone that's interacted with it and put your questions in there's, there's some there's some really good ones and let's see let's get through it so Zach ask the first question so uh, from Danny Chapel, we've got the best keeper we've seen so best keeper we've seen I believe this is a uh, mill based I'm assuming so Who's yours? Who did you say yours was? I'd say, because obviously I've not seen some of the best mill keepers of all time, I'd say probably, in my lifetime, Bart and Forney. I think both of them were very, very, very good on their day when they played for us, so. Yeah, do you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about, I was thinking about, I was thinking about um, Denzel, Tony Warner, Brian Horn. I think it's hard to look past Bart, considering we've been playing in the championship for so many years and how good he had been. Winning player of the year, you know, you don't often get that as a, you know, you don't often get your keepers winning player of the year and there's a reason behind it. So I, I'm actually going to go with Bart. I think Bart has been the most consistent and the best keeper we've had. And we've, uh, yeah, I, I, Bart now, no, I think maybe he's just over the hill. He's still a, someone you can rely upon but I don't think he's at his best but we definitely had a few good years with Bart so I'm going to say Bart as well yeah and to be fair you can look at um, obviously our current goal, goalkeeper trainer Andy Marshall he was he was good on his yeah, day as well yeah he didn't really have many games I obviously no. he played in the FA Cup final but yeah um, anyone but George Long let me just say that next question yeah uh, would we have Neil Harris next year so we, we differ on this uh, yeah no, I don't. I don't think, and I don't want Neil to stay for next year. I want him to do a job. I want him to keep us up and leave with his uh, legendary status intact. Um, and I think, you know, I, I had no hope, as you know, after Joe Edwards. I thought we were going down, and Harris has come in and, and turned that around. I believe that the football that he's, you know, I think we've got another question later on that that relates to his football. But um, ultimately, I think. He needs to keep us up and then, and then step aside. Um, who we get come in will be a, a, a different question, but yeah, I, I think I'd be happy for him to stand aside at the end of the season but after keeping us up. Zach? Well, this is where we definitely differ. I think this is the most con controversial question because I definitely think if he does the job for us this season and he keeps getting the results that we're getting at the moment, then he should stay at us, but I see where Dad's. I see what Dad's saying because obviously, I want him to leave as a legend for the club. I want him to leave with a with our fans respecting his name. I don't want him to leave as the person who got us relegated on his second season. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very controversial that that question. So you want him to stay? Fair enough. You can understand. It. You can make an argument for both, which is why it's a good question. Next one. Uh, promotion or the FA Cup? Who's, Would we who's, rather who's win the promotion? question from? Um, it's Danny Chapel. Oh, is he still? It's all yeah, free. Yeah. Bloody hell, Danny is giving us free, free, free good questions. What promotion or the FA Cup? Um, that's a great question because uh, I'm greedy. I'll always say both. I'd want, <laughs> I want everything as a Mill fan because we don't get that much. The happiest day probably as a Mill fan was the FA Cup final or the FA Cup semi final certainly. Um, and we'd probably get absolutely hammered in the Premier League, depending on what squad we had. Yeah. So, I'd, do you know what? I'd, if you give me the opportunity, I'd probably say win the FA Cup. Yeah, that's the same with me, because you look at getting promoted to the Premier League, we would get beat. We, we'd go straight back down, and it's 
a year of quality, but financially it would be great for the club going yeah. to the Premier League. You know, the but money that it would do and also, secure the future. But winning the FA Cup is very good for money as well. It is, but it's nowhere near the port. It's nowhere no. near the money you get for getting the Premier League. But you've League, got to so. think if you win the FA Cup, you'll be more. I think yeah. you could say to people, "Look, Mill have just yeah, won a trophy. Won, yeah, we've won something which we haven't done in our in our, our history, other yeah. than winning promotions and, and and league titles." So yeah. it would. Yeah, I think I think I'd, I'd take winning a, a major honour. Mm. Although you'd ask James Beryl, and he'd probably choose the the Premier League for the finances alone. Yeah. Next one. Uh, this is from Glenn Williams. Would you let Bradders, Leonard, w- Wallace, Bart, Savile, etc. No. move on? Uh, they're tough questions, and ultimately, I think it all depends on how much money you're spending on them. Because if you're spending a lot of money on any of them. You've got to be able to justify it. And if, if I go through it, Bradders, I would let go. Um, Leonard, I'd keep. I think um, Leonard's been excellent. Regardless of his injury uh, injuries, I would keep Leonard. I think he's a difference maker in the team. And the reason I let Bradshaw go, I think we could find um, a, another striker, a younger striker, someone that doesn't have, you know, as many, you know, be, ha, relying on a striker to score your goals and him being injured is different than, than having your right back. Uh, who else was it? Sav- Savile, again, depending on the, Savile would want a little bit of money, so it depends on how much he'd want because we're quite stacked in the central midfield position. I'd be happy with playing Donor and, and, and Billy Mitchell, so, and potentially Honeyman in the central midfield, so do I want to spend a lot of money on, a, on someone? He has been very good when he's played, you know, he is one of the leaders in that dressing room, so he's a tough one. Murray Wallace, I'd probably let go. He's a he's a squad player, most certainly. But again, depending on how much money it's going to cost me, I'd, I'd let him go. Is that it? Um, well, Bart, would you let Bart go? Uh, probably yes, I would let Bart yeah. go. I'd see. Well, I'd want to see what Connell Truman's got. If he's good enough, then um, then yeah, I'd let Bart go because I'm sure he'd be on some wages as well, Bart. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the next question from Glenn is player of the season. Well, I just mentioned him. It's Ryan Leonard for me. Um, yeah. He's the difference maker in the team. He, you know, his one-on-one defending has been excellent. Uh, we've struggled without him playing, and that's the biggest testament you can give to him. Uh, he, he's consistent every single week. You know, you know, you can rely upon him. He, he can play central midfield, but he's really made that right centre back or right back position his own. So um, he's he's my my player of the season. Savile's pushed him reasonably close. We've re- we've really setting Leonard up to have a bad game today, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have a bad. <laughs> yeah, um, Rotherham will score twice down his side, but hopefully not. But yeah, I definitely uh, that's right, Leonard. Yeah. Who's yours? It's the same. I'd say probably so. Yeah, he's he's consistent. He's an absolute beast. He isn't the tallest of people. He isn't the strongest of people, but he makes it work. He's very very solid. He I love, doesn't let much from him. Yeah, I loved his celebration. Um, you know, it was the home game where he run, made a t- tackle, and run down the wing, and then got ta- uh, taken down. Yeah. When in Savile smashed it into the crowd, but that celebration after that it shows he's got a little bit of, you know, heart about him. Yeah. Um, and so. a personal favourite because um, my mate's a South End fan and he's ex South End and he's probably one of his favourite players ever. So. Yeah. Very, very. He well, seems like quite a nice guy as well. Yeah, he's yeah. When I've met him, he's a decent fella. Um, the last one from Glenn is why is Harris football working so why is Harris football working well uh, two things I think fundamentally back to basics in terms of how you play you know have a very very simple game plan um, don't over complicate things and second of all you give the players confidence you give the players belief that they can do something um, and don't I, and, let your heads drop yeah yeah, don't let your heads drop. But the other, the other, the other key thing is you, you need a bit of luck, um, and he has a bit of luck. Joe Edwards had no luck as a as a Millwall manager. It seemed like the amount of times where we, we 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 gave up one or two chances in a game, and every single time we were getting punished under Harris, that's not happened. Let's hope it doesn't happen today. Again, I don't want to prophesize or speak something into existence, but we've definitely been far better at um, you know reducing chances. Saying that, West Brom, you look at that game, it was a very typical of a Joe Edwards performance that we deserve to win the game. 
you know, we give away a cheap penalty. We go 1 0 up. They had two chances in the match and scored one of them. You know, if we take our chances in that game, we comfortably win it. But um, I believe that's why Harris, Harris, Harris has come in. You know, the, the players have got his respect. You know, they know he's a legend at the club. That gives them belief. And, and he's kept it. He's, you know, the football's, football's far more simple. I still see passages of play that we've done under Edwards with those players. So I think Edwards has definitely benefited the players in terms of coaching. Um, and, and you see that every now and again. But ultimately, Harris does keep things far more simple. And, and, and for the, the current squad of players we've got, that obviously seems to work. Yeah. Uh, so the next one's from MSC Blades. He's got two questions. First one is not... Um not football related, but it is Manzies or Almonds. Very, very, very controversial. This. Um, I am not going to say one of them. I don't want to offend half the people that watch because <laughs> it is really 50 50. I'd probably, you know, I've eaten in both, but I'd probably, because I ate them more, probably say Manzies. But um, yeah, it's not a big way, one way or the other. I don't really eat that much pie and mash anymore. What do you cut? I don't think you've ever had pie and mash and liquor. I don't know if you'd like liquor, to be fair. I do like pie mash, though. Yeah, One of my do. personal favourites. Yeah, we used to have it every Sunday. <laughs> uh, oh, no, every, was it every Saturday? Yeah, after every Millwall, Saturday every, after Millwall. After so. Saturday, I used to come home and cook us. A, so I think I'm, forget Man's Diamonds, my pie mash is probably the best. The best. Um, and what's the next question? I think it's the best drive home over the years, or the, be, or the best, uh, best, best game. Drive, the, the best game we've been to? Yeah. Um, someone said the best away game. So if we say the best game, my best ever game is the um, FA Cup semi-final. Um, I never thought I'd see me in the FA Cup final. It was an unbelievable experience. You know, seeing grown men flipping emotional and tears in their eyes. Millwall men, you don't, you, I didn't expect to see it. Um, but that was, yeah, that was my most memorable game. To be fair, uh, me and Zach are both Barcelona members, so we go to quite a few Barcelona games. And um, being at the game at Stamford Bridge, where Iniesta scored uh, in the last minute to beat Chelsea, that was quite a, that was that was an amazing experience as well. It was great to see Chelsea uh, absolutely capitulate like that. I still remember Drogba crying in his uh, flip flops. But um, as Millwall, yeah, definitely the FA Cup semi final. What yeah. be what be yours? Because you weren't alive. I'm I'm really not sure because I've seen I've seen some very 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 good wins. I've seen. Everton, I've seen the Cholton win when Matt Smith towered over the, at the back post. I've seen a lot of wins where people have got emotional, people have jumped up and down and just absolutely went mental. But Leeds away, that 4-3 win in the last minute, I think just the emotion that most of the Mill fans showed that day, I don't think it will be beat. And I think that is probably my best away game as well. I just, I don't think you could beat that for me. Next. Next question. Um, flip the page. Next one's from David Turner. Um, where, like, where do we sit in in the in the den? So I sit in the Dockers block fourteen. Uh, we did sit in, I think it was block sixteen. I think we had we had season tickets in sixteen. Um, yeah. You're obviously a ball boy every week, and you have your space right in front of the Barry Kitchener stand. Yeah, it's where um, all the subs warm up, and it's right by the multi ball. Yeah, so you, you're there. Um, as a kid growing up, I was always, you know, at the old end and and the new stadium. I was um, in the coal blow block ten. I uh, used to sit at the back. It was the first place I ever got a season ticket. Well, I remember my dad getting me a half season ticket, the best present I ever had. I think I was about. 12 first time I ever got a season ticket um, and it was a half season ticket and my dad wrapped it up in um, flipping carpet everything it looked, it looked like it was a massive thing and then obviously it was just a little thing it was just the best and then going there every every, and then every year it was me and, me and my sister we, we would go on our own and, and dad would sit down um, by the away dugout, giving the uh, away managers as much abuse as possible. So <laughs> that's, that's 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 our journey. Obviously, I've sat in every stand, um, sat in the north stand when we played Portsmouth and Paul Merson absolutely ripped us a new one. Um, the only place I've never sat at the den is the I've never sat in a, a box. I've never sat in an executive box. So that's 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 to be done at some stage. Yeah, we will do it at some stage. Yeah, but I've never done it yet. Uh, next one's from Diana Day. 
Uh, most exciting game that we've ever watched? Most exciting, um, well that Leeds one is, is definitely the Leeds away. Scum football away in the playoffs was a, was a really good one. Um, Another one you could say is Everton. Yeah, any, any, exciting. Any last minute? Any, or, yeah, any last minute goal. Yeah. You know, it was like even the Birmingham one the other day, you, you score a last minute winner, it's, it's, it's the best, absolute best feeling. Um, and we've had a few over the years. You know, I think my favourite one is Leeds or Everton, just because of the, just yeah, because just, of the moment. Yeah, you, you, certainly. That, that was it called the Huddersfield playoff game in, the, you know, where we went to Wembley that year, where we won two 0 That the atmosphere, the, the atmosphere in the Den it was the first time where I felt that the Den um, had a, an unbelievable atmosphere. It sold out because we, we didn't sell out many, many, many times in, in those days. If you look back ten years, our average, our average gate was ten and a half thousand and we've always been reasonably uh, roughly around that even in the old den um six or seven thousand but um you look at our average attendance now it's sixteen and a half so um obviously football's become more popular you know we've, we're getting more tourists but um when the den is packed it's a good atmosphere it, it can be when you've got the right manager you know harris understands it but, when, you know, when it was packed under Rowett and, and, and under Edwards, I don't think we quite had the um, tenacity or the you know aggression that you need to, to get a Mill fan going. Um, and I think we've got that back now. I think that's one of the things that you know we were talking about earlier, the difference makers. But yeah. Yeah, um, another one from Diana is predictions for end of season position. I'd take the position we're in right now and start to snap your hand off. I don't like making predictions because certainly with the championship is, you know, with, like I said, we're driving to Rotherham today. Um, we're on an awful run of form and we're on a decent run of form, but it goes out the window sometimes and it, anything can happen. So We're known for breaking it? records we're, and we're going to break them. Yeah, we're we're uh, losing record probably. Um, I think we've got seven games left. We've got, we've got some, you know, we've got Rotherham today, Huddersfield away, Plymouth at home, games... Games we should be winning. Yeah, yeah. Effectively, you should be winning those. There's no guarantees in in the championship, so we could quite easily lose all bloody three of those. But um, if I, I'd, I'd take 16th right now, if 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 I if, if I could. So let's hope that that is the position we finish, and then we look to build in the summer. A big overhaul of the squad, and hopefully we can kick on and, and go higher up the table next year. Yeah. Next uh, question. Next one's from Adrian Nind. Who do you rate as a manager if we were to change manager? Um, Pep Guardiola, I think, is quite good. Yeah. Um, I'd take him. Realistically, that's the difficult question, is who are we going to attract? Um, you need to look at a lower league manager, you know, like, like Schumacher, although he, he's, he's not that, he didn't do particularly well, but someone like that doing well at a lower league club, and then and then you take a chance on them. Um, and if they don't work out, we could... If we can say bye to them. It's really difficult. I think we're quite a difficult club to manage because of, you know, the fact that when we turn at home, you know, it's a horrible place to be and you really need to keep on side of us. That's why, you know, people were talking about Nathan Jones coming as a meal manager. We can't have somebody that that emotional on the touchline because we're, as a fan base, we're really emotional. That's really good when everyone's going the same way and it's positive. But as soon as that's turned to a negative, you've got a negative, like an, an emotional manager and a negative fan base. It's just gonna, it just kick off. Um, so, yeah, it, I'm, I'm not really sure is the correct answer. It depends on who would be available and who would go for. But um, yeah, that's that's the difficult question about not not staying with Harris. Who would you go? You got to get someone good in. Next question. Uh, this one's from Dave Clark. Pride. Pride, passion, quality, or style? Well, you want all of them, didn't you, really? And, and I know he's probably alluding to the fact that Harris has come in and he's, he's got the players, you know, fighting like lions rather than being um, playing playing the ball around. I, I think it's a little bit of a... Um, I think this one's pride. Mainly, well, yeah. uh, no, passion, sorry. You, you do Mainly. need... To, certainly with Millwall, you, need to, you, you, you want your players going into the tackles. You want your players getting stuck in. You want... You know, running the full length for the pit, uh, the pitch to, to, to get involved. Um, but for many years, we've seen the same same kind of football. And if we want to kick on, 
You know, you, you look at Ipswich they've done, they've got a far bigger budget. It's not as much of a surprise to me that they, they are where they are, but you know, you've got to learn how to play good attacking football with the pride and passion. Um, and obviously we hoped that would be the case under Edwards, but he, I think he was probably a little bit too much of a coach, too, too methodical without being, um, you know, didn't, it didn't show enough emotion to a certain degree to the players maybe in the dressing rooms. Um, and I certainly didn't give them enough belief, which, you know, no matter how you play football, your players have got to go out there with belief, knowing that they, are, they can win a game. Um, and, I, and, and that's what you want from a manager. And I think that to a certain degree, that's what, what Neil Harris has got. What's the next question? Uh, it's from Isle of Sky. Why move to Essex and not Kent like most Millwall? Uh, you would have an easier drive home. True, we would have an easier drive home. Well, sometimes driving away from the den can be really bad. Sometimes, to be fair, it's about an hour door to door for us. The answer to the question is um, a great friend of mine lived in the town that we now live in, in Essex. Obviously, I'm from New Cross. My wife's from Hackney. Um, but the friends of ours moved out to a town in, in Essex and we visited there and we thought, you know, we had two girls. Zach was 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 a baby and we thought, um, you know, it's got to be a better place for them to live than, than rather than living in central London. That town that we went to was, was really lovely and, and, you know, we moved out there and it's the best decision we've made. So, yeah, it's an hour drive to the den, but it gives you something, you know, it gives you something to look forward to as you're driving in there. But uh, So that's why we moved to, to Essex, not Kent. Uh, next one's from a personal friend, Sam, Samuel Furnival. Who would you rather keep, Joe Bryan or Jaffa Tanganga? Um, it's no question it would be Jaffa Tanganga, but will we, be, will we be able to? I don't think we'll be keeping Tanganga. I don't think he'll stay. I don't think we'll be able to afford him. We certainly wouldn't be able to afford a transfer fee for him. Uh, but we've done it before. We've done it time and time again. You look at, we didn't sign Ballard. We should have. Um, didn't, didn't sign, sign Cresswell, Cresswell, we should, should have. have. Like, if didn't we could, sign if, Shackleton, we should have. If we could have, I'm not sorry about Shackleton, but it's the, the, them two centre-backs. And Tanganga, you know, if there's an, a, a possibility, he's, if he falls within our price range, I'd take him. Joe, Joe Bryan, I'm very hit and miss with. Uh, he's made too many mistakes. That You know, the penalty he give away against um, West Brom, you know, he's, he's costly. You know, he headed, you know, he gave another team a goal with a header. He just headed into them. Um, he's, a, he's, he's quality on the ball, but... Defensively, he's definitely uh, he's he's got a few errors in him. So um, Tanganga all day long. Uh, next one's from Ben Dow. Uh, least favourite club other than West Ham. Uh, so I, you know, we said about Barca. I'm a big we're big Barcelona supporters. Um, it's Real Madrid. But if it's in England, um, other than West Ham, it's Palace for me. Yeah, per, yeah. From personal experience, it's Palace because obviously that's the biggest game I've probably ever watched as a Millwall fan, Palace at home in the FA Cup. That's the biggest draw we'll get in years, I'd yeah, say. We, we, won't, we won't get a West Ham. Well, you said Everton, to be fair. Everton yeah. is probably bigger than Palace. But, but Palace, Palace as a, a rivalry. Local, yeah, it's a local derby. Yeah. And we, we lack for it. You know, the Championship, you know, potentially QPR going down. We'd be the only bloody London club left in the division. Let's hope we're still in the division. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's ridiculous at the moment how how few teams are in even in the south. Never mind in London. Um, but yeah, it's Palace. Yeah, good song about them. Uh, next question's from Flatchy. Uh, should Harris stay beyond this contract? We have answered this one, and it's so, very mixed. Yeah, we've mixed answered opinions. it. I say no. You say yes. And then we've got one more, one more little page of it. Uh, Simon Wood. What is your most memorable away game slash trip together? So, yeah, Scunthorpe in the playoffs was, was really good. Like I said, Leeds is definitely, um, was an amazing game. You know, the roller coaster of that game, being up, being so comfortable at half time to throwing it away in the second half, very typical of a Millwall performance. And then, you know, Tom Elliott and Jed Wallace, um, yeah, that was, that was a great away day. So, that, yeah, that, that I'd probably say that Leeds game, like Zach said earlier. <laughs> so, Next one is from YouTube. Uh, if you could, would you rather prime Morrison or prime Harris for the rest of the season? <coughs> for me, it's Harris. Harris is a, a goal scorer, which is what we need. You know, we create a few chances. You don't have a goal scorer. No, um, Morrison. I think was probably a better leader, um, and he re we've we've missed him since he's gone in, in, in terms of the dressing room. Uh, you know, he had a way of getting you know getting to the players, geeing them up, and they. A lot of them didn't like, like some of them didn't like him, but he still got got a tune out of them. Um, but I 
think Harris definitely you know Harris played in some good sides so he had, he you know we had a lot of creativity around Harris when he played you know with the likes of Cahill, Eiffel, Reed, one of the better mill teams we've ever had um, and Morrison's played in some pretty crappy mill teams to be fair to him um, but I, I'd still rather I think I'd rather have Harris yeah um, next one is from Mark Pure Plumber the worst drive home you ever had um, well, it, it's difficult because obviously the worst drive home could be, mean two things. One, after a performance, and two, just like, terrible to get home from. Um, I, I can't remember where it was, but we had one up, up north and it closed the M1 and had to go you know, through little towns and everything. It took us ages to get home. We were at like three in the morning. That was a bad drive home. I can't even remember where it was. It might have been Blackburn. Yes. Um, but the... Actually, the worst drive home was the, the feeling after that Blackburn game at home in you know the last game of the season last season. It was heartbreaking. Oh, the way we done it, the way we threw it away, um, so so frustrating. Um, that was a tough one. You know that was where I really didn't want to do a drive home, but you know we did obviously. And I, you have to at that point because well, you have to express your emotions yeah, in some way. And, 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 and like I said, and, um, we appreciate you know the fact that you know some people like what we what we've got to say and appreciate the fact that we you know we say we're honest and yeah honestly that day was was very 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 tough but i remember one drive home we had it was um, a drive home from the den and i think they closed like five roads that led us oh, home yeah. so it was like a six hour drive from a one hour yeah, one hour drive home yeah. it was, well, it they, was uh, very stupid they closed the rob rive tunnel you couldn't get across tower bridge Blackwall Tunnel was closed and then we got to the Dartford Crossing and then that closed. It was like, this is ridiculous. It was also, um, I forgot who it was at the start of the season. Was it Sutton? At the start of the season? Yeah, Sutton, yeah, Sutton. They closed about three tunnels that, that was, would have led yeah, us home and we had to go through where where I was born, didn't we? We had to go yeah. through Acne, yeah. which was uh, which was also pretty shocking. I fell asleep halfway through that. Yeah. Well, that's what we, him saying to me, oh, we was going to get the train to Sunderland and he's like oh dad I'd rather get the car of course he'd rather get the car he sits in flipping luxury on his phone watching something on on Netflix and whilst I'm flipping driving there and back but um, yeah if we're going to Sunderland on the 20th we will be driving but um, yeah it's easy for you to yeah. pass, passenger princess that he is yeah um, last question is from Sev Thomas uh, my mum <laughs> The most memorable, most memorable game we've ever had. Um, I think we've answered that question. To be fair. Yeah. Um, how did Ronaldo make you feel at the FA Cup final? Uh, not very good. Um, I, you know, I knew, I knew that FA Cup final was going to be difficult. It, we all did, um, and we nearly got to half time. I think if we'd have got to half time, it could have potentially changed the game. And, and then he rose like a salmon, didn't he? And, and put in the back of the net a great header, one of his first goals in a, in a, in a cup final. He went on to score many. We saw him score for, against Barca in a cup final for Real Madrid as well. So yeah, he's been a bit of a, an arch nemesis, Ronaldo. But he was, he, he's, he's one of the best players in the world for a reason. Yeah. And then last question: Describe Ian Holloway in one word. Uh, something that rhymes with hunt uh, is probably how I would describe Ian Holloway and I think we'll probably end, end it on that uh, yeah. if you've stayed to the end thanks very much for watching uh, you've killed 20, 28 minutes of the drive so we really appreciate that um, let's hope we get all three points today we're, we're, honestly we really, really appreciate people taking the time and effort to put the questions in yeah. hopefully we've answered them uh, succinctly and haven't droned on too long um, and but like I said, more importantly, let's hope we get three points today at Rotherham and you see us in about four hours' time and we're buzzing after getting a 3-0 win. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, exactly. Maybe five. You never know against Rotherham. <laughs> it's going to be 1-0 Rotherham, isn't it? Yeah, but, 100%. But, but we'll end it there. Thanks very much for watching. Um, there's only one way we can end it. No one likes us. We don't care. <laughs>